Hello, everybody. Uh, Bishop Rex Waddell here. It's a snow day. Uh, Ten inches of uh, snow or more in the St. Louis area. And uh, just thought it best to uh, have a little Bible study here uh, at home. And invited the membership to join us. So let people know that we are doing Bible study live uh, here on Facebook at this very hour. And um, you can be sure to go ahead and um, uh, contact individuals Live. and uh, let them know that we are preparing to do the Bible study. I didn't get a chance to do all the Mevo hookups, so I'm going the old-fashioned Bible study live way. Uh, so uh, you can go to bishopwaddell.com, go down to the... Um, uh, tab, go to the tab that says Ministry Helps. Ministry Helps, and go down to um, Bible Study Live, and you'll see a tab there that says Snow Day Bible Study. For us, it's definitely a snow day here in the metropolitan St. Louis area. So go ahead and let folks know that we're going live. Um, you can get the Bible Study. If you can't get the PDF file download, you can join us in the book of Acts, chapter 27, around verse 18. Uh, we're going to talk about a splinter of hope, a splinter of hope. Uh, go ahead and let folks know we're going live while we're doing that. Feel free to uh, share this video uh, live broadcast with others. Call them up. You know, I, I, I know you out there, Deborah Jux. I know you're over in Indiana right now. Get on up. I, I put it, come on out. Tell everybody to go live. Bible study, call folks. Some people are here. Some folks are there. Uh, in St. Louis, people go sledding on Art Hill. They might be sledding. Come pull off the side of, of a snow mound for a moment and pick up their phone. Let's have a little bit of Bible study live. Looking forward to that. So make sure you go ahead and share this so people know that what's going on and that we are really, really doing what we say we're doing. Again, Bible study live is about to get underway. You can find this Bible study uh, live uh, uh, study on bishopwaddell.com. Go to bishopwaddell.com. Look at the Ministry Helps tab. Click on Ministry Helps and then go right down to um, the um, portion about uh, Bible Study Live. You'll see Snow Day Bible Study. All right. Can make a couple of observations real quickly. Um, uh, some of you who are many of the clergy in Church of Living God have gotten some postcards. Now it's coming to mail, kind of a big postcard like that. It's a New Year's blessing. And we want to remind you what a blessing it is to be in 2019. A friend of mine uh, shared with me, a uh, sister um, uh, from uh, uh, Texas gave me a, a call and she, as we talked, she inspired me. Uh, and she said these words, uh, that eyes have not seen what God's about to do in 2019. So that goes out to Sister Missionary Pack uh, shared that with me. And I kind of said, I'm going to use that. Now, I gave you credit for it this time, Sister Pack. Next time, I might not do that. So don't be offended. I have not seen what God's about to do in 2019. I believe it's going to be a year of open doors. Don't you, don't you sense a shifting? Don't you sense the Spirit of God emerging? Uh, as 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 uh, Samson did when he shook himself and he saw his strength returning, and was, and saw his hair was growing back and realized that that which enemy had tried to spoil had now refreshed itself, and this is a year of refreshing. In fact, our national theme uh, for the Church of Living God for 2019 is revival and restoration. Our season of refreshing. And the scripture references is Psalm 51, 1 through 5 and Acts 3 and 19. Uh, while we're doing those announcements, let me uh, reach out to you also uh, and ask you to uh, join us uh, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, in the Renaissance, Tulsa Renaissance Hotel uh, for the weekend of April 27, 28. That's a Saturday and Sunday. 27 is BNAC. B as in boy, N as in, as in Nancy, A as in apple, C as in candy. BDAC stands for Bishops and National Auxiliaries Council. Um, and so uh, all of our uh, executive board members, all of the department heads, uh, members, and many of their support staff will be joining us in a planning session. 
there at uh, the Tulsa Renaissance Hotel, the same property where we'll be convening in April, I'm sorry, in July 7th or the 14th uh, for our national convention. So be that as it may, uh, make sure you kind of mark those dates and uh, we'll be talking to you more uh, about how to register for BNAC. And that 28th is Founders Day. All totally redone, renewed Founders Day. All of the proceeds will go towards national evangelism. And we're looking to have a wonderful time, April the 28th. All of you who are not able to make it to the national location for the site for Founders Day, you'll be receiving packets. That's right. You'll get packets mailed to your local church with the order of service, with posters inside, uh, with ways of contributing. Uh, we're going to do a streamathon. God said the same. And you'll be able to witness that service and call in, text in, come on Facebook and be a part of that experience in Tulsa, whether you're able to get to that location or not. All right, moving right along. I want to again remind you that our Bible study is available. You can go to bishopwaddell.com. Once you get on that website, look at the top, you'll see Ministry Helps. Click on Ministry Helps, right? Once you clicked on Ministry Helps, then you can choose Snow Day. That's right, Snow Day Bible Study, Snow Day Bible Study. So go ahead, let folks know we're, we're on the air. We're thanking God for each and every one of you today, You know, asking God's blessings upon you, upon your family for a prosperous new year, a year of what? Open doors. Paul talks about there was a door open for him to do ministry. This is a year of open doors, saints, and we thank God for the privilege, the liberty, and the, and the faith and the strength to stand fast in that liberty wherein God has set us all free. All right, let's, let's take a look at the lesson. Again, we're looking at um, the book of Acts, chapter 27. So if you can't download the PDF lesson, uh, if you can't get it, because it's available for you to get it right now, so go ahead and get it down. Um, uh, Norma Champ, are you still at church? I, I'm a little, uh, Nancy, call Norma, tell her Bible say live is on. I, I, I can't wait all day for y'all to get on here. I'm serious. All right, Shirley Bond and Decatur, where you at? All right, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad. y'all better say something to me now. Decatur, are you on live? And listen, and don't call my phone right now. I'm using my phone to do, to do the Bible say live. Why would you call my phone now? You ain't been calling me in the middle on, on three o'clock uh, on Sunday. Why are you going to call while I'm doing Bible study? So tell folks, hey, stay off the phone. Bishop Waddell trying to accomplish something productive. Y'all say amen. So uh, again, so glad to have all of you on. Go ahead and say hello to each other and share this. You all who are in Cincinnati area, God bless you. All the way over to uh, California. Uh, those of you in the 11th district, God bless you. My friends in Texas, my friends in Oklahoma, God bless all of you down there in Arkansas. May God bless you. Hope that you'll join us here on Bible Say Live. Uh, I want to say a good shout out to our friends, uh, Pastor Tony and Cynthia Hines. They're moving into a remodeled facility. I believe they might be there this Sunday. This so I want to say to you, Sister Hines, God bless you. Thank you for uh, uh, coming on board and helping us you know, with some of our BNAC activities. So God bless you. Let's, let's, let's try to get started here again. Where the Bible study is, is Acts 27. Uh, we're in Acts 27, and uh, we're looking at verse 18. Uh, you have your Bible study. Like I said, if, you, if you're looking to get a hold of the Bible study, you can turn to uh, the website, bishopwaddell.com. Go to the top of that rascal. Look for Ministries Helps. When you get to Ministry Helps, click on Bible Study Live Snow Day Bible, Bible Study. So to all the members here at Temple 203 in Fairview Heights, Illinois, I want to tell you guys, come on, uh, let folks know we're on the air. Uh, but Brother Deacon Ford, you've been calling. Make sure you let folks know we're on the air. Uh, Deacon uh, and Elder Elbert and all of the church family here in Fairview Heights, uh, let them know that they can get a little bit of church in right here, right now. And and while, while you're doing that, uh, let me remind our folks and everybody else that you can, if we were not able to get to church today because of the weather, uh, we want you to join the Bible. So we also want you to give. Uh, you can make your contribution by texting C-O-T-L-G, that's C Church of Living God, C-O-T-L-G, the number's 203, and text it to 73256. Again, text C-O-T-L-G, the number's 203, and text it to 73256, 73256. And when you do that, you'll be able to give electronically. So we don't want to miss the opportunity of us being blessed uh, uh, by giving and by the church receiving your uh, tithes and offering and sacrificial gifts. This is still part of our Pull Heart Month. 
you who are in Fairview Heights, you know what that means. And we have a monthly goal here we're trying to reach in 2019. Uh, if you're unable to text, you can go to COTLG Ministries, COTLG, COTLG Ministries org, and you can give through the website there. God bless you. Let's have a word of prayer. God, we just ask your blessing upon this place, upon this people, and wherever this broadcast may go, that it goes with healing, it goes with restoration, it goes with deliverance and power. Father, allow yourself to be God in every capacity. Move as only you can. Heal, deliver, set free, that you might receive all the glory. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Again, thank you all so much for joining us today. And we are going to go ahead and get started here. Uh, this is Bishop West, <laughs> Rex Wydell. Hey, let me get a drink to make sure I can stay myself steady here. I need a little more <laughs> Um, Bishop Rex Waddell here uh, with Bible Study Live. Uh, this is our snow day Bible study for those who are in the St. Louis area. Uh, we survived one of the worst snowstorms in almost a decade or so, a little bit longer. So we just thank God for the privilege of seeing the beautiful snow from inside my house. <laughs> amen. Amen. All right. Take a look at the Bible study for the day. Uh, again, one last time, you can go to Bible study. Excuse me, you can go to bishopwaddell.com. Go up to the ministry help tabs, click on the ministry helps. And when it drops down, click on Bible study live. And when that page comes, you'll see off to the right something that says snow day Bible study. Click on that, and the Bible study will pop up uh, on your tablet, on your phone. Uh, maybe you can print it out and share it with others. In fact, we encourage you to share this study with others. Um, I want to take a look at our study for today. It's entitled A Splinter of Hope. A Splinter of Hope. And um, let's see here. I want to start out reading for a moment. Acts 27 and 18. Acts 27 and 18. King James reads, and we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day lightened the ship. And the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was taken away. Listen now. When they were on the sea and the storm became overwhelming, Paul tells us through the writing of Dr. Luke that it got so bad and the situation with the storm and its tempest was so unrelenting that even the most seasoned mariners and those individuals who had become accustomed to the worst that the sea could provide, even these seasoned mariners felt hopeless. In fact, they didn't feel as if they had lost their hope. Wait a minute now. But what it says was, we felt like all hope had been taken away. In other words, wherever... We thought hope would be available. Whatever things we thought might provide hope, we didn't lose it. We felt like all hope had been what? Taken away. Um, I want to call your attention now to uh, Acts 27, verse 44, towards the bottom of that chapter, Acts 27, verse 44. And the rest, oh, let's look at 43. I'm sorry, 43. Uh, but the centurion willing to save Paul kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land, verse 44. And the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. Some on boards, 
but they made it. Some on broken pieces, but they made it. I want to talk in this lesson um, a splinter of hope. How to survive. How to thrive. How to be delivered. How to be healed. Even if there's only a splinter of hope. All right. Again, the lesson that we're reading today and studying from can be found by going to bishopwaddell.com, clicking, uh, clicking on the ministry help tab, letting that tab fall down and click on Bible study live. And you'll see the snow day Bible study right there. First of all, let me ask you something. What does the world really say about hope? Uh, the way we typically use the word hope conveys in a sense now, a sense of doubt. For instance, we might say something like, uh, I hope it doesn't rain. Or even when responding to the question, will you go to heaven? Some folks will say, well, I hope so. For many people, hope is simply a strong wish that things will go in our favor. The world's definition of hope carries with it a sense of uncertainty, doesn't it? You remember Jesse Jackson's famous statement, keep hope alive? Well, that, what does keep hope alive really mean? Well, Reverend Jackson's words was said to encourage others to continue to strive for a certain positive outcome, even though the evidence of such an outcome was scarce. When the majority of the world uses the word hope, it is always mixed with, listen now, some doubt and some uncertainty. Whenever the world talks about hope, it's always some doubt and some uncertainty there. So the world hopes for the best, but really prepares, oftentimes even expects what the worst. But now, so with the world, hope has this taste of uncertainty. There is some unsettled uh, idea about whether what is hoped for is going to really occur. Uh, it, is, it is a weak, sickly expectation of a future outcome. But what about the, the, the believer? What does it mean to the believer when, when the Christian talks about hope? Well, for the Christian, hope takes on a much different meaning. Our hope, listen now, this is very important. Our hope is not anchored or insured by man-made promises. Uh, there are folks who uh, uh, have the hope of a warranty. You paid extra money when you bought what your appliance, when you bought your whatever it was, your electronics. You had extra money spent on a warranty. And the moment you try to execute or use that warranty, the warranty you had hope in. Somebody got up on a winter morning and hoped their car was going to start. And because what they had a new battery put in a week ago and that new battery failed you. So uh, for the Christian, our hope is not put in man or in man made things. In fact, the Bible says that our hope has a confidence. Uh, we, for, this is the confidence we have not in them, but the Bible says this is the confidence we have in him that he that hath begun a good work in you shall perform it. Because of this, the concept of doubt is not a part of the Christian's definition of hope. In other words, we don't take hope and, and frost it over with doubt. Are you with me? We don't take hope and weaken the structure of hope by talking about uh, uh, the fact that we have doubt about it. Basically speaking, hope is a confident expectation or an assurance in the word of God. Have God not said it? Shall God not perform it? Shall God not make it good? All right. If you're just joining us for Bible Study Live on the snow day, uh, thank God for you. If you want a copy of the Bible study that we are using for today, uh, please log on to Bishop Waddell. Dot com. Bishop Waddell, W-A-D-D-E-L-L.com. Bishop Waddell.com. When you get there at the top, you'll see a tab that says Ministry Helps. Click on Ministry Helps, then go down and look for Bible Study Live, right? Bible Study Live. After Bible Study Live, you'll see a snow day. Hey, now you knew you had to go to church today, didn't you? All y'all in St. Louis, some of the churches were closed. Now you knew you had to go to church today. 
So I'm bringing the church to you. If you can't go to church, I'm bringing the church to you. Again, for all of the Temple 203 people and everybody else who wants to contribute, um, those of us that want to do the tithes and offering thing today, hey, 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 I got you. I got you. Uh, you can text C-O-T-L-G, Church of the Living God, C-O-T-L-G, the number's 203, and text it to 73256, 73256. So that's right. Text C-O-T-L-G. Hey, hey, Chesley and Jordan, are y'all listening? Pay your tithes. Well, those are my kids. I can say that. C-O-T-L-G, 203, to the, the number 73256. 73256. Or you can go to COTLG Ministries, Church of Living God Ministries, the acronym COTLG Ministries, plural, ministries.org, and you can give through the website there. Oh, all right, that's so we're still on page one. Look at Hebrews, Hebrews 11 and 2. Hebrews 11 and 2. 11 and 1. It says, Now faith is what? The substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Now, I want you to remember about that substance word, because I'm going to come back to that. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. And by it, the elders obtain a good report. It's the substance. Now, the word substance uh, in, in, in uh, that verse 11 and 1 of Hebrews, um, in, in its initial meaning, and, and connotative meaning, it, it talks about uh, uh, foundation. Uh, it talks about the very thing that we are building our life on. Uh, Jesus told a parable in the book of Luke. He says, he these things of mine and do with them. I will liken him unto a wise man that builded his house upon a rock. And so uh, that idea of the rock, the idea of that constructing uh, upon something firm, is, that's what the word substance. So now faith is the ground. Uh, faith is the ground. Faith is the building blocks. In other words, faith is the building blocks on which we hope for. So we're not putting our hope on something that's unstable. It's the substance of things hoped for. Hope is what I stand on. Hope is what my faith is anchored to. Hope comes with, faith comes with the expectation. And hope waits on it. They that wait on the Lord. In other words, that, 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 that now that's not a waiting in terms of looking at my watch, but they that serve him, that, that, that I serve him because I believe there's some hope in it. There's a, an assurance that what, that what God has promised will come to, come to pass. You know, so, uh, that's what the doctor tells you about certain medications, right? Certain antibiotics. And said, here's your antibiotics. I want you to take these antibiotics. And even if you start feeling better, continue to take it, finish. And so uh, uh, the first day, I may not have a, a different response. I still may feel ill. But I believe if I just keep on doing it, hear me now, if I just keep on doing it, things are, gonna, are going to improve. And hope is that energy that allows your faith to keep on trusting God, to keep on believing God, to keep on keeping on, as the folks said. Now, look at this. Our translation reads, now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we cannot see with our eyes. Let me say that again. Now, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we cannot see with our eyes. The King James Version of the Bible reads, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And we said the word substance can be interpreted as a foundation, right? Now, uh, in Luke chapter 15, around verse 13, this word substance comes up again in the Gospels. And it reads, and not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance in riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land and he began to be in want. And he, he wasted his substance. And uh, 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 without a proper word study, uh, we may think the worst thing that can happen to a person when they walk out of God's uh, uh, presence is they go broke. 
they lose their money, they lose their job, they lose their financial means of support. That seems to be the worst thing that happened in this parable until you look at the word substance. And you word the word substance here is not indicating that this young man wasted his money. He maybe he did, but the reason he fell into want was he lost the ground on which his faith was stabilized in. Hear me now. Hear me now. Uh, when you read the parable of the prodigal son in that 15th chapter of Luke, there are three characters that come right, you know, right up in, in, in the text. You have the father uh, who, uh, who was there at home taking care of his family. You have an elder brother uh, who seems to be going through the motions of a son, but having a bitter taste in his mouth. And that taste shows up a little later on in the parable. And then you have this younger son who's just ready for the world and want to get out and kind of do his thing. One of the characters that we do not readily find uh, speaking to us in the story of the parable of the prodigal son is a character that has the most profound, one of the most profound impacts on the story, and that's Satan. You see, uh, as long as the prodigal son was in the presence of his father, uh, he was in a safe place. Uh, he was shielded from the assault of the enemy. Are you, are you with me now? Come on now. Hey, listen, listen. I'm going somewhere with this. Well, hold on now. Put the macaroni and cheese down. Hey, put it down. We're we going to get this done together. Now, so what's going on here is what? Is that Satan now is talking through this to this young man through the fence. Hey, ain't you tired? Of all the time, be home by 10 30. Ain't you a grown man? Ain't you tired? Your daddy just kind of giving you what he wants you to have and peeling you off and, and telling you you got to drive the truck and you can't drive the Lexus and all this. Ain't you? Why don't you go out and do your own thing? Well, see, uh, once the enemy had gotten the prodigal son to leave the presence of the father, then all of the things the father had anchored his life to, the safety, of the substance of the father's teaching and protection uh, was voided. And so he wasted his substance. He lost his foundation. Uh, the devil loves to be your counselor. Let me, let, me, let me talk to you. Satan loves to be your counselor, man too. And the devil will talk to you all night long. Don't ever tell people that you don't got nobody to talk to because the enemy will pull a chair up and he will worry you all night long. I was talking with a sister the other day who had gone through a long bout of sickness. Her body had gotten weakened, shortness of breath. And she said to me, other folks are getting healed even in my church. She said, I don't understand why I'm not being healed. But she mentions I come to church. I have to sit and rest in the back before I can move forward. I'm out of breath. But she comes to church. I said, well, it's interesting to me First of all, that, that even though you are ill, God gave you just enough to get you through those church doors. And I'm not sure how much that service is for you. I'm sure it's something to uplift you. But I think you being in that service, your tenacity, your perseverance does more to minister to others who are not nearly as ill as you are uh, but makes excuses for what they don't do. When you walk in the door, you take away all excuses. God is using you. Seldom is the road to your blessing. Listen, the way to, the road to your blessing that God uses, the way God takes you to your blessing, is seldom the same road you would have chosen to get there. Are you with me? And so oftentimes, uh, uh, one of our worst counselors is the enemy himself. And so Satan had counseled this young man and he decided to take the enemy's advice. And so he wasted his substance, but he had enough substance, the Bible said, that to come to himself, to recognize that I really have an option to exercise. I can go back to my father. Even if I'm only a hired servant, it'll be better than the life I have right now. So understand now that, that, that the substance we're talking about is faith. It is the substance of things hoped for. We're talking about this ground that 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 hope has to anchor in in our faith. And so 
Faith believes, hear me now, faith believes God and hope extends a hand of expectation. Let's move on. Let's move on now. Um, so, practically speaking, faith is a noun and hope is a verb. Faith is the confidence in the thing we are hoping for. Hope is a strong confidence that something that hasn't happened will actually happen. So hope reaches out for that which has not yet been seen. So faith is the ground and hope is that thing I stand on and I use it to reach with expectations. So I, I, I don't just have faith in God. I have an expectation for what he promised. Are you with me? All right, let's move a little further. Let's move a little further here. Uh, the Christian's hope is constructed upon the confidence in God's word. All of the individuals mentioned in, the, in Hebrews chapter 11, uh, the hall of faith that we call it, were able to do such miraculous actions because of their confidence in God. Uh, here's something I always love to say. If you expect great things from God, then why aren't you willing to attempt great things for him? Listen, for a Christian, is hope a feeling? Is that something, oh, I just feel so hopeful. You know, y'all make that face like, you know, like y'all smell the Lord. You know what I'm saying? It's hope. <laughs> hope is a divinely constructed foundation built up on God's promises. Things like fear and discouragements are feelings and occur naturally within the human experience. So things like fear, a dread, discouragement, those are feelings. And they're part of even our uh, sympathetic nervous system. You know, ooh, the startle reflex, right? Uh, that's Those are things, fear. You don't have to teach a baby to be scared of something. Are you with me? Uh, my little grandson was playing with a little monkey a couple of weeks ago, a little, 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 little stuffed monkey. And uh, Rosalind squeezed the monkey and the monkey made a noise. Like it, it, was a, it was a toy that had a voice. And that little fella started hollering. He had never, he never accounted the fact that toys could go and make noises, especially toys with eyes, noses, and mouth. They look kind of like some of us, Lord help us. Anyway, so the bottom line is that what occurred here is that the ability to be fearful was already in him. In the Bible, there are about 365 verses in the Bible that talks about not fearing or fear nots. So about 365 fear nots in the scriptures. That's interesting because there's about 365 days in a year. So God has given you a fear not for every day of the year. Because fear and discouragement is a naturally occurring human experience. However, the biblical kind of hope, the godly kind of hope that we're talking about here does not occur naturally. But godly hope must be created within the heart of a child of God. Hope for the Christian is not a feeling. Hope for the Christian let me now, is a knowing. And that hope has to be created, has to be made within the heart of a child of God. And that comes through a relationship with Jesus Christ. For, for we know, Paul says, for we know, for we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord, those that are called according to his purpose. How do you know that, Paul? How, how do you know? How do you know? For this we know the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. How do you know that? It's because it's something that faith has placed in the spirit of a believer. And that kind of hope, listen, the world will never understand that we, the Bible says that when, when we, even when we lose our loved ones, that we don't weep as those that have what? No hope. The world doesn't understand that. I was at a cemetery in, in New Orleans several years back, and as I walked through the cemetery, I saw uh, uh, this um, a grave. Uh, it was kind of almost like, like a, a type of, uh, almost like a little box, but above ground. And uh, 
on the on the top of the gravestone that that kind of was a capstone to this uh, tomb. It read sealed forever. Sealed. I don't forget it. Read sealed forever. And I told one of the brothers that was with me. I said, "You see that right there? Whoever put that rock on don't know the Lord. No brother, no sister, no brother, no sister. It ain't sealed forever. For the dead in Christ shall rise first. This is the hope that we have. All right. If you just join us, you can get the Bible study that we're using for today, the snow day Bible study. And you can go to bishopwaddell.com. And while you're doing it, go on your Facebook page, share this, share this, share this, and let folks know that Bible study live is up for snow day here in the beautiful uh, month of January in St. Louis, Missouri area. So now uh, if you need a copy of today's Bible study, you can go to bishopwaddell.com. When you get there, click on the Ministry Helps tab. When that scrolls down, click on Bible Study Live, and you'll see the little icon that says Snow Day Bible Study. Click on that, and you'll have the PDF form of today's lesson. So I want to say thank you to all y'all who have joined us, and we're having a good time in the Lord. So make sure you share this. Let folks know that there is a splinter of hope. All right? I'm coming down to the bottom of uh, page one of our Bible study. It says Hope Struggle. Hope struggle. The Christian's hope is constantly under attack. In many ways, the world attempts to undermine our hope in God by trying to convince us to put our hope in something or someone else. We are encouraged to have hope in America, or hope in a new medical procedure, or hope in some new financial venture. How would hope in these types of things be detrimental to the Christian's hope? Um, I think a lot of times uh, we look for uh, tangible things we can feel, experience, tangible substitutes for an invisible God. See, that was the problem that a lot of the Gentiles had with Christianity because they were used to gods you could see, the gods of stone, and gods with heads of birds and uh, gods with, 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 with feet of, of, of alligators and, and uh, gods of silver and bronze and gods you could see. And when, when the Christians came and the apostles start talking about this invisible God, this intangible God, they thought, wait a minute now, that we don't have no trinkets. Uh, there's no medallions we can pray for that pray with that there's nothing we can put in our house and and hang on the wall or nothing we can put some apples and oranges around what, what, what are you what are you talking about and I think subconsciously uh, we long for a tangible God well in a sense Christ's coming gave us a God that was in flesh didn't he it, it, it was the Son of God, the Word made flesh. And when Christ came to earth, he came to address that need to have a God that we can touch. And the Bible says even now that we don't, that Christ is our high priest. And unlike the high priests that were in, under the order of Aaron, that we have that the, the high priest in the Old Testament, you couldn't touch him. Uh, he was untouchable. Your touch was defiling to him. And so we have not a high priest that cannot be touched by the feelings of our infirmity, by what we are experiencing both physically and emotionally household, because when Christ became flesh, he became that tangible contact. You remember after Moses had led the Israelites out of Egypt and they were around Mount Sinai, they were camping. He goes up with, with Joshua up into the mountains and, and there he's communing with God and the Ten Commandments is being conveyed through those 40 days of fasting that Moses experienced. Down in the valley, is that right? Aaron finds himself being uh, manipulated by a group of folk who wanted a God they could see. As for this Moses, they said, we don't know what has become of Moses. What time is it? How, how long has Moses been gone? And they created a golden calf. By instinct, by our human nature, we crave a hope we can see. And so because of that, we're easily um, often led away from our hope in God and we place hope in things. Okay, I understand the new surgical procedure, the new medication. And so you, you have the surgery and the surgery is a success. 
It goes without a hitch. Everything looks good. And the patient dies anyway. You see, because the surgery can only go so far when they make that last stitch and close up that final incision, the doctor cannot command the body to heal. That's the power of God. The same God that gave life in the beginning must now, listen, bring life in the healing of that body. And so uh, no matter what things that present itself that we may even avail ourselves of, I'm not saying don't try it, don't uh, have some level of confidence in, in your physician or in your financial future. I'm not saying don't do a business plan, don't do your research before you invest, by all means. But don't, you can do those things, but keep your hope in God. Uh, the Bible says that uh, the commander of David's armies told David, listen, whatever you do, King David, don't count the people. David want to know how many uh strong-bodied men did he have at his disposal if he wanted to call together a national Israelite army. And the word came, hey, David, don't count these people. And of course, David did count the people and that became an issue between him and God. Now, I don't think the issue was because David was counting the people. I think the issue with God was David was counting on the people. So by all means, when you cash your check at the window, count your money. When folks bring your change back, count your money. Count your money. <laughs> count your money. Count your money, but don't, but don't count on it. Count on God. Your hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. So there are times when a hope in things can be detrimental. And in the 27th chapter of Acts, this is precisely what we see. I'm going to page two now, the lesson. If you just join us, we're halfway done, but the good half is still coming. Uh, you get a copy of this lesson uh, by going to bishopwaddell.com by hitting on the ministry helps tab. Let it drop down and, cl and click on Bible Study Live. And you want to get that Bible study um, that says Snow Day, the Snow Day Bible study. And for those here at home, now you knew that church is going to come to you. You knew, listen, Temple 203, you knew you weren't going to get away with this. Listen, and so if you want to contribute financially uh, to the tithes and offering, uh, make sure you... Uh, uh, text C-O-T-L-G, Church of the Living God is the acronym, C-O-T-L-G, the number is 203, and text it to 73256. So C-O-T-L-G, 203, and text it to 73256. And members, if you want to give, you can also go online to C-O-T-L-G Ministries. Again, Church of Living God acronym, C-O-T-L-G Ministries, plural, it's ministries.org. And you can give from that website as, as well. Uh, with those of you who have joined us today, go ahead and click on that bottom. Share this with others so they may be a part of this Bible Study Live snow day. And some of y'all ain't having no snow day, I understand. But we in St. Louis have a record snowfall. And uh, I was teasing some folks that were sliding around the other day when it started falling. And I said, no, don't fall at this church. You got some folks like to sue the church. Now, come on now. Don't fall here. I said, listen, if you fall here, we only insured for death. You know what I'm saying, man? Now, let, let's get back to the lesson. I'm on the second page. Acts 27 and 20. Uh, Luke writes here in Acts. He says, and when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us. All hope that we should be saved was taken away. Now let's examine some of the factors present in this story that, that caused their hope to be taken away. What Now folks can lose hope, but what causes your hope to be taken away? Taken away. Um, remember now that, that Paul uh, was on the ship uh, as a prisoner. So he was like, uh, on, on this vessel, this commercial sailing vessel that had all kinds of products and you know commodities going to distant shore. And they, they said, hey, we're going to ride with y'all. And Paul said, wait, 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 wait. Before you leave the docks, before you leave the port where we are, 
the Spirit has told me that we shouldn't leave right now, that, that there is some tragedy at sea waiting us, and y'all should wait and hold out and stay here for a while. But they won't leave. Who, who are you, Paul? Who are you, Paul? Some deflop preacher? Some broke down preacher, evangelist? Who are you? No, get, get your behind in the ship. And they did not adhere or even respond to Paul's a warning in any way other than to ignore it. And they find themselves now in an unimaginable storm, a storm literally of biblical proportions. And uh, there is fear running rampant, running rampant. And they began to have their hope taken away. But one night an angel got on board that ship, the Bible says. And the angel walked past, hear me now, the captain's quarters, walked past all the officers' quarters, walked past all the experienced sailors' quarters, and went down to where Paul was being locked up in that ship. But God walked past all the folks who, who looked like they should be in charge and spoke to the man of God and told them that, listen, God is going to keep you, Paul. God is going to deliver you and everybody on this ship. But the emphasis was everybody that's on this ship. And so his word the next day to the captain was an angel visited me. And the Lord spoke to me through that visitation and told me there'll be no life loss. I know it looks bad, but there'll be no life loss. But everybody... Got to stay on this ship. Got to abide in this ship. Let's, let's look at this a little bit. Acts 27 and 20. Mm -hmm. Acts 27 and 20. Um, and when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. The realities of life. So what, what takes away your hope? One of the things that can take away hope is the realities of life. The realities of life can cause you to lose your hope. Prior to the ship ever leaving port, the apostle Paul had warned the captain and the crew not to go out to sea because God had warned him that a great storm would overtake them. I've often said, if you don't want to live with reality, then reality has no problem coming and living with you. Can trying to keep a positive attitude prevent you from being affected by the reality of what you are experiencing? So just, just like, look up, look on the bright side, keep your head up, keep a positive attitude. Listen, speak those things that, give, listen, tell you, that's not going to change the fact, your positive attitude, that you're in chemotherapy. You're in chemotherapy. That's not going to change the fact, keeping a positive attitude, uh, uh, that your son, your grandson, is up on charges. They're not going to change the reality uh, that your husband didn't come home last night. They're not going to change reality that you're a government employee along with 800,000 others who are not getting paid. So God does miracles, but he does not do magic. Are you hearing me? And so sometimes when you look at the reality through, through the natural man's eye, hope can be taken away. That doesn't, and, and, and we ought not to tell folk that they're weak Christians or uh, their faith is not right because they have moments where they feel all hope that things could get better has been taken away. Listen, ex so listen, experiencing a great loss can make you lose hope. The Bible said that uh, they began to take all of the commodities, all of the, of the cargo on the ship the big screen TVs, the, uh, uh, the Mercedes car, you with me? All of, of the heavy objects that they were meant to take to port and, and sail and get paid for delivering them. They began to throw those off the ship because with those heavy things in the ship, it made the ship sit lower in the water and it made it easier for the waves to get in. So they began to lighten the load and they, they threw off so many things they thought were valuable. They threw off so many things they had hoped to get gained. They threw off so many things that, they, that was going to pay for their down payment on their home, their car, their child's education. They threw all these things away they thought that they had confidence in that would 
uh, uh, help them in some capacity, but in order to save their lives, they the Bible says that they have to throw them off. And the problem with that was, even after they had thrown all these things off, made all these sacrifices, the storm still was threatening to kill them. And there's somebody out there today, you have made a lot of sacrifices. You, you've let go of some stuff. You mortgaged some things to help people. Uh, you lost a job because you had to stay home when, it, when, when somebody else could have stayed home with that matter. You know, uh, uh, she's everybody's mom. She's everybody. He's everybody's daddy. But you had to stay home when everybody else had, did, did what they wanted to do. There are folks who made sacrifices for children. That they ain't the first time cornbread got in trouble. They ain't the first baby little girl brought home. And you just kept making adjustments. You kept throwing away what you had for you, the time you had for you, the money you had for you, the energy you had for you. And you thought, well, I'll go ahead and lighten the load and everything will be okay. And it wasn't. It wasn't made any better. And now the devil has come and said, hey, don't, don't you feel foolish? You should have kept all that stuff. Ain't made no difference. They ain't caring about what you sacrificed. And like I said, if you let him, Satan will be your counselor. He will talk to you all night long. And so, remember I said earlier, because God wants your faith. The devil wants your feelings, baby. He wants your feelings. And he'll get your feelings. If you ain't careful, he'll have you acting a fool once Satan gets in your feelings. And so Paul tells him, listen, uh, a great sacrifice has been made. What sacrifices have you made in your life trying to make things better for you or for others? Does such sacrifices always work out as you expect it? No. These sinners were willing to part with their most prized possessions if it meant they could improve their odds for survival. So sometimes you can lose hope because you know all you can do, you made these incredible sacrifices, you, you've given up stuff that was important to you, and the storm is still raging and still threatening your survival. Hope in the word of God, listen, listen. Hope came to Apostle Paul through the angelic visitation. Remember, we talked about that. It was during that divine visit that Paul received a word from the Lord. So maybe read that whole Acts chapter 27. After the lesson, you'll get a better understanding. And the angel said to him, fear not. Get the fear. Fear and faith can't live in the same room. Fear and faith can't sit at the same table. And fear and faith can exist in the same Christian. So the first thing the angel says to him, is this fear, is, this, is, is there fear in here? Get it out. Get that fear out of here. Fear not. Fear not. Paul shared this word with the captain and, and his crew, emphasizing this fact in Acts 27 and 23. He says, and I believe God. That's Acts 27, 25. I believe God. How do you think the captain and the crew might have responded to Paul's advice, stay in the ship? What were the shipmen attempting to do, according to verse 30? When in verse 30, the sh the, those, those crew members was acting like they was kind of working on the ropes of the lifeboats. But in reality, they were trying to ease those lifeboats in the water, looking all around. And their plan was to jump on them lifeboats and then deuces, get out of here, right? I'm leaving here. Y'all stay with Y'all can stay with the ship if you want to. And Paul kind of caught them and recognized that y'all trying to abandon the ship. Ain't you? Wait a minute now. And so he goes and, and he tells the captain, you better watch your boys. Because the, the Lord spoke to me and said if, that, that we could fear not and should fear not and must fear not because if they abide in the ship. And so in order to prove their allegiance to what Paul was saying, the Bible says they cut the rope and they let those lifeboats drop. I'm going to talk about cut the rope one of these days. They cut the rope and let those lifeboats drop. Listen. And so their action showed they had committed to the word of God and the word that Paul had spoken to them. So when Paul instructed the shipmen and the pastors to abide in the ship, the sailors then confirmed their faith by cutting the ropes, the lifeboats, which would have been their only physical means of escaping the ship. 
And so they did all they could do. They tossed out the cargo, the valuable commodities. Now they, the very thing that was a tangible hope for them, the, the lifeboats, we're done with that. We'll let that go as well. Um, so listen. In Acts 27, 41, something interesting happens. Acts 27, 41. Um, and when they had, this is 40, Acts 27, verse 40. And when they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves unto the sea and loosed the rudders, bands, and hoist up the mainsail to the wind and made towards shore. They, 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 could see a, they could see an island ahead of them. And falling into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground, and the forepart, the front of the ship, got stuck and remained unmovable, but the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves. So they were trying to get to the ship, but, but they found themselves in a, in a shallow area of water, and the ship hit a rock and got stuck. And the waves kept hitting the back of that ship, beating against the rocks, and that began to destroy the ship and break the ship into pieces. Verse 42, and the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. Listen now. After taking the necessary action of cutting away the lifeboats and committing to abide in the ship, as the apostle Paul had instructed, what happened? What happened was the ship ran into a big rock and ended up shattered into pieces. Now here's the question. Why would God tell the people to stay in something that no longer existed? God had instructed the people to abide in the ship, but now the ship had been shredded. What were they to do now? Why would God allow the very thing you had been depending on to be taken away? Why would God tell you, stay in, stay in the ship? Don't you leave the ship? The ship is on you. And then God allowed the ship to be torn in pieces. Why would God have them to put their hope in the ship? The answer is, he never did tell them to put their hope in the ship. If they were to put their hope in God's word, that ship brought them to the rock. And that was as far as the ship was supposed to go. You see, I think that the, the, the issue here was the people, once again, wanted a tangible, visible form that their hope could anchor to. And they were, again, being tempted to trust in the ship, the physical boards and nails, tar and sails, rather than trusting in a God they could not see. The disciples mentioned, what manner of man is this? That even the wind and the sea obey him. It's so easy for us to put confidence in people, things, ourselves. I said for many years, even as a pastor, I, I really believed that I had faith in God. But as time progressed and as I matured as a Christian brother, I began to realize I have probably more faith in my God-given abilities. Only when the storms of life challenge us beyond what we can do within ourselves does God's power begin to truly be seen in our life. Uh, you really don't know that God is all you need until you wake up one morning, he's all you got left. And so hear me now. As this ship began to break into pieces, this is very important you get this. As this ship began to break into pieces, the guards that who were given uh, the job of, of keeping Paul in custody and other prisoners recognized that if these prisoners were to escape and get away from their custody, that the Roman government would kill them. And so rather than risk harm to themselves by the escaping of a prisoner, their plan was, let's go ahead and execute these prisoners. They're going to die anyway. Right, let's, let's go ahead and execute these prisoners here and, and just say they die, you know, in the, they drown or whatever else, but at least they won't escape and won't cost us our lives. 
all of a sudden, now hear me now, it's very important. We see what Satan's real agenda was. This whole matter was to kill Paul. Satan comes in John 10 and 10. We have Jesus's, we have Satan's mission statement and, and Christ's mission statement in the same verse, John 10 and 10. Satan's mission statement it says, I've come to kill, steal, and destroy. That's his mission. Kill, steal, and destroy. And then Christ gives his mission statement. But I've come that you might have life. And not just life in a generic way, but to get that life in abundance. Are you with me? And so now we realize that the storm and all of these things that were occurring that was trying to destroy the ship, trying to cause the loss of life, was a demonic occurrence. Uh, you remember uh, when Christ was preaching at the church uh, and um, in the book of Mark, and uh, a spirit, an evil spirit that was in a, in a man, and the man cried out, and, and um, Christ said, hold your peace and come out of him, hold your peace and come out of him. The word, the, the, the phrase hold your peace in the Greek vernacular is the words be muzzled. In other words, Christ put a muzzle on that devil's mouth. To hush, be muzzled. And of course, uh, uh, that man received his deliverance and the spirit was muzzled. Well, then he goes now from there uh, on this ship with his disciples when the storm comes up and they wake Christ up and says, Master, carest thou not that we perish. I remember that story. And he gets up and he says, Peace be still. Well, wait a minute now. Interesting, if you do your word study, that same peace is the same word he used with a demonic spirit. He tells a storm, be muzzled. Wait a minute. Be muzzled. The same thing he told that demon. Then when the storm ends on the Sea of Galilee, they, they go to the land of the Galileans, and there he meets a man that has a legion of demons living in the cemetery. Are you with me? And 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 he he ministers, and that man receives a miraculous deliverance. Some theologians believe that the storm on the Galilean Sea was de, of a demonic origin. In other words, somehow the enemy is trying to keep Jesus and his apostles, his disciples, from getting to that demoniac. There were 2,000 devils that were fighting to keep Christ away from that man. And that there, there are situations where uh, uh, the enemy uses all types of vehicles to ride into your life, to bring about death, destruction. And his ultimate goal is not just your physical death, but you're spiritual. See, Paul goes to Rome after this. And, and then uh, while in custody, he writes the majority of, of his epistle. We call them the prison epistles. And if Satan would have had successfully killed Paul physically or ruined him emotionally or spiritually, much of what we know about the ways of Christianity and the order in the church we would not have had any access through biblical means. And so what am I saying to you? Now, the Bible says that the, the, one of the centurions says, no, we're, gonna, we're not going to kill these prisoners. He tells them, he says, listen, this is, this is, this is, don't you hear what he says? He tells them in verse 43, 27, 43, I'm about done now. He says, but the centurion willing to save Paul, kept these crazy folk from their purpose of trying to kill Paul and commanded that they which could swim cast themselves in the sea. Otherwise, uh, hey, uh, we, we close enough to this island. If y'all know how to swim, go for it. Get out of here. But we ain't killing nobody today. Get out of here. And no excuses today. Get out of here. And folks jump in the water and, and they went to swimming. Well, everybody can't swim. A lot of y'all won't get your hair messed up. Some of y'all scared of water. You know I mean? And so... Uh, 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 and so now what about those who can't swim? Look at verse 44. And the rest, that's some of y'all, y'all, the rest, the rest of folk who don't swim. Why'd you go to wild? I didn't learn to swim, but I was about 33 years old. Hey, learn to swim. Anyway, hold on. And, and the rest 
got to the safety too. Listen now, look at verse 44. Some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And they grabbed the boards and they floated to the land. They grabbed broken pieces and they made it to safety. Listen, in these passages, Satan's re real plans are revealed. All of those things were orchestrated by Satan to try to kill the apostle Paul, thus ending his ministry. Paul was on his way to Rome and was later to be in prison in Rome. It was while Paul was in prison that he wrote the majority of his epistles. Had Satan been successful in killing Paul at sea, we would not have the blessings of his writings in our Bible today. According to Acts 27, 44, how do survivors make it? Satan wants to take away all your hope so he can destroy your faith and render you useless for God's kingdom. Just as God kept the apostle Paul, God can keep you as well. Don't succumb to the stormy circumstances around you. Listen now, they made it on a splinter of hope. You can make it on boards and broken pieces if you have to and get where God is carrying you. Uh, do not be so distracted by your circumstances. We love to quote that scripture that says, I will lift my eyes unto the hills for once come my help. My help comes from the Lord. But what that scripture really, 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 really means that the hills were where many of the resources uh, for the nation's survival, both militarily and practically was innate in those things in the hills. So he said, first, uh, I let my head to the hills. He says, and he says, when's coming my help? And that's a question mark. Does my help come from these circumstances around me, from these tangible things? He says, my help goes beyond the hills. My help coming from the Lord. Are you with me? The word circumstances comes from the word circumference. And it really means the things that stand around you. There are some things that stand around us uh, that if we allow it to, would begin to block our view of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. Things that stand around us can become grand and great distractions and cause you to miss out on the abundant life that Christ has promised. In this new year, you got to stand up. Put some bass back in your voice. Listen, there's been times I put headphones on with no music playing and just walked and prayed and talked out loud because faith comes by hearing. And by the time I got a mile down the road, I was in full preaching form, preaching to me in my spirit, reminding the enemy what he's not going to do, uh, telling God how grateful I am and how much confidence I have in what he has promised. He that has begun a good work, let him finish it. Don't be discouraged. You can make it if you got to make it on boards and pieces and planks. Whatever's necessary, you can do it. There is a season of open doors. Listen, the Bible says in the 12th chapter of Acts, after the angel has successfully led Peter, the prisoner of King Herod, out through all of these wards of guards, they came into the courtyard that led to the street and there was an iron gate that prevented their total departure from his incarceration. And the Bible said the gate opened of its own accord. All you got to do is keep moving, darling. Keep moving, baby. Keep moving, brother. You keep moving. And when you get to that which you cannot do, God will do for you what you cannot do for yourself. But oh, if you lose your substance, if you lose that hope, you'll be like a prodigal son who wasted his substance. And when he needed something to stand on for his faith to be able to lift, you see, faith is the now, hope is that verb. Faith is that thing that, that hope stands on and hope has arms and reaches. And when you pray, when you pray in faith, when the Christian prays in faith, his arms get longer, her arms get longer. And when her arms get longer, when his hand, when his arms get longer, you can reach everything except that which lies outside of the will of God. Now, 
I'm going to close here. I'm, I didn't got to mess around. Got excited. I didn't got so listen. Uh, any questions, any comments you want to make? We'll pause here just a moment and get some of those questions and comments. Any questions, any comments? Yeah, I, mean, I didn't got to mess around. Got excited. So listen, uh, any questions and comments? Questions and comments. We'll pause here just a moment. Questions and comments. Questions and comments. Any questions or comments? <laughs> uh, okay, Brian, no organ today. I started bringing my keyboard out now, but you know, if I bring my keyboard out, that means I got to pay myself. Y'all, we pay our musicians, so if I, if I bring my keyboard, then I got to pay myself. I'm less interested in that God bless you, Sister Gwendolyn. Thank you so much, for Sister Mitchell, for joining in. Uh, any other questions or comments? Yeah, Sister Bowie, just having that kind of excitement, Nita. It just, it's just good to know him. It's good to know that, that we are already victorious. You know, I can I tell you a secret? I cheated, and I went to the end of the Bible. I went to the end of Revelations. So before I read all of the Bible, I read the end because I, I wanted to see how this thing going to turn out. And do you know that we win in the end? We are victorious. Even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Okay. So, uh, Sister Donnell, what, what's your question? What's, what's your, uh, uh, Roz is my producer tonight. What's the question? Do you know what she asked? How do you block out distractions? So Roz is my producer tonight. Y'all say amen. So the down there want to know, how do you block out distractions? Well, first of all, you recognize that they are distractions. You know, if you got, Sister Donnell was an educator. She was a teacher. I think she, I think she retired. And you know, uh, 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 there are some kids, they want so much attention. They're cutting up in the back and, and all they want is attention. And so if you keep on giving it to them, you ain't going to be able to do your job in the classroom. And let me, let me say this. I, I came out of time here, but, you know, the devil always wants a stage. At the end of the day, how do you recognize the devil walking around? He'll always find a reason to say, look at me. Look at me. I'm over here crying. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do. Y'all pray for me again. It was 112 times on, on, on this weekend. Y'all going to make it 113. Pray for me. They all, the devil always wants a stage. Sitting around. Y'all go ahead. I'm not going in there. No, no, no y'all, it's okay, it's good, y'all go on. Look at me. The devil wants to stay. So first of all, you recognize that it's a distraction. And you make, you make up your mind that giving it attention ain't going to change nothing. All that's going to do is run your battery down and cause you to be weakened. And that distraction will meet you the next morning. And so what you have to do is, is find something greater to give your attention to something greater. Why would you get in the car if you know that car ain't gonna start? Why are you in it? You know it ain't gonna start for the last five weeks. Get in the car that's gonna start and take you somewhere. See what I'm saying to you? Get in the car that's gonna start. And so a lot of these distractions are, are just things to deflate your faith in God. The people and things. Find your greater purpose. Find that which, if I do look at it, if I do give this energy, it's going to give me a deliverance. It's going to give me a greater opportunity in God's kingdom to do his will in his way. Anybody else? In, any other questions? Yeah, yeah Roz, is, she's in the background. She's my producer. She don't charge much. But if you want to give, C-O-T-L-G, text to C-O-T-L-G, uh, 7-2, and, 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 uh, and, and uh, uh, get it done. Y'all make that text, all right? Any, any other questions or comments?
This is just a sister Elbert, Demetri Elbert. Thank you for tuning in. Now, all y'all that that feel bad for the rapping, y'all come up and help me shovel, man. I, I you know, I'm, I'm watching neighbor shoveling right now. Uh, let me show. I, let me let me close this curtain before he see me and want some help. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us today. Any other questions or comments? Sister Dorothy Gibbs, thank you for joining tonight. Thank you so much. Uh, all of you who came on board here, Sister Donnell, Pastor Vincent Donnell, thank you so much. Elder Brian, Sister Pointer, thank you so much. Thank you all for joining us tonight. All of y'all, please share this with others. I know we like to share things. Please share this with others. Uh, Tish, my dear friend, evangelist, preaching woman, thank you for joining us today. Norma, uh, not too late for you to get the lesson. Sister, sister champ. Hopefully those pork chops are done. Next time, Norma, don't, next time, why don't you bake those pork chops? No, that's all that fran, you know, if you eat pork, you know, at least. In fact, this year, let's be kind to the swine. All right. Anyone else? Any questions or comments? Uh, you can get this lesson in its totality, the written version, by going to bitchawaddell.com. Clicking on the Ministry Helps tab, and when that window drops down, click on Bible Study Live, and you'll see the Snow Day Bibles. Now, listen, we're going we're gonna to be updating our way. I know, y'all, I know, I know, I need to update the website. I've been kind of busy. And uh, any other questions? Uh, Brother, Brother Brian says, uh, do you feel that the state of our closed government is a type of stage the enemy has? Uh, let me see here has reached. Do you think that the state of our closed government is a type of stage the enemy has reached? Well, certainly, it for some, the government being closed is a great distraction. It sends about worry uh, about how others, I mean, people are going to be able to take care of their day-to-day -day life, uh, financially speaking. Um, but it's also a time, remember now, that, that, that uh, not to put your hope in what man provides for you. Now, it's easy for you. Reverend, that's easy for you to say because, all right, uh, you, you, you getting your check. I, I, I hear what you're saying. But at the same time, I've been in situations where I wasn't getting the check. I came to church one day and was told because of, of the, the shift in income several years ago that, that my salary was in jeopardy. We have bought this land. We have we have built these buildings. I have I, I followed God in, in, into getting this construction, and the people followed me. And I, I prayed about it, and I gave all my salary back for two years, because I believed that 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 my local church would not have gotten into that financial debt had they not followed me. And God fixed it so that He took care of my family without the church's income. Are you with me? So I took responsibility for what the church had come to. I'm not saying it to, to brag. I'm saying it to you, but to, to, to tell you know that God will make a way. And through those two years, you can see I, I, I didn't lose so much weight. Wasn't, wasn't much wasted away. <laughs> you know, God, God is able. And like he did with Elijah, you know, if 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 the brook dries up, if the the raven don't bring your bread and, and flesh. He has other things provided for you. Other things provided for you. So this government shutdown for some people, it's going to be a terrifying experience. For others, it's going to be a clarifying experience. Let me say it again. This government shutdown for some is going to be a terrifying experience. For others, it's going to be a clarifying experience. Anybody else? Any questions? Anybody else? Yeah, uh, brother uh, uh, Albert says that sometimes the devil will, will, will tell you fake news, but Jesus brings you good news. And, and this is the good news we have concerning him. 
He's begun a good work and he's going to continue. Well, brothers and sisters, again, I want to thank you for joining us today, for sharing, for your questions. Uh, thank God for the snow day. Now, this, that somebody needed to hear this word. If God got to send 10 inches to make us sit down and come together as a Bible study live family. Well, I have your attention. I got a few minutes before I have to sign off here. Um, that uh, remember uh, that that um, I want you to save the date for April 27th. That's a Saturday. That's going to be the BNAC assembly. BNAC, B as in boy, N as in Nancy, A as in apple, C as in candy. It stands for Bishops and National Auxiliary Council. It is all the components of our national leadership, the executive board and its members, the national department heads and committee chairpersons and some of their support staff will be joining us in Tulsa, Oklahoma at the Tulsa Renaissance Hotel on April, Saturday, April the 27th. It's the same venue where the national convention will be convening in July, 2019. Now, during the BNAC meeting, it's kind of like a final fitting, okay? You know, when you have a garment and you go in to have it tailored, and before the big event, you have one final fitting to make sure everything comes together. A BNAC is a coming together. Many of our auxiliaries and ministries nationally have been working all fall and winter long on new innovative ideas, and those ideas are being brought to Tulsa to be properly knitted and fitted together. Now, uh, there are, uh, will be at least one open forum meeting. So whether you're on a committee or board or not, as long as you're a member, you can come, you can hear the proposals and have input in the open session. And when we go into closed session, we'll definitely take into consideration everything that was shared in the open meeting. That 28th, the day after BNAC is a Sunday, it's Founders Day. We're hosting Founders Day in the city of Tulsa. And you'll be getting more information about that. But we're going to do a stream of thought. We've got some, some ministers who are going to host that on Facebook Live and also stream it from our National Church's website. And you'll be able to participate, whether you're on ground at the national site or back at your local church. Because at your local church, we're going to send out packets, all right? Every local church will get packets, including programs and everything you need to be on one accord. So that Sunday, whether you're at the national site for Founders Day or at your home church, you'll still have the same connectivity and the ability to participate along with all of us. So again, God bless you. Uh, God keep you. Share this video. Get your Bible study downloaded from bishopwaddell.com and I'll see you soon in the service of the Lord. And let's thank Evangelist Roslyn for being my hidden producer. God bless you now.